What's going on guys? My name is Robert and you are watching Southpaw Auto Works. In this episode, we continue our short series on how to rebuild a power steering pump. In part one, we learned how to tear down the unit, what things to look for and make note of, uh, which ultimately is gonna help you rebuild the unit with a much higher success rate. In part two, in this episode, we're gonna learn how to clean the unit. Honestly, a lot of the cleaning is super self-explanatory. It's uh, very elementary. However, there are a few items that uh, are easily overlooked and these things, uh, they could bite you. So without further ado, let's jump into it. It's a real shame that the parts can't actually be cleaned this quickly. If my memory serves me correct, it probably took about 30 minutes to clean this pump in the solvent tank. But you gotta know that this pump's been cleaned numerous times before this. When the unit first came out of the vehicle, it was covered in grime all over the outside of it. So I wound up having to take a wire brush to it and I must've spent an hour cleaning it that time around. If you don't happen to own a solvent tank or have access to one, it's not a big deal. This unit can be cleaned just with brake parts cleaner. You'll burn through more of it cleaning it, but it can be done. Uh, I've even seen guys online uh, using soapy water, like filling up a five gallon pail full of soapy water and scrubbing out the parts by hand with that method. Here I'm using compressed air to uh, blow out all the ports on the uh, power steering pump, including the bolt holes, like all of it. Um, again, you don't have to have compressed air, but I've always found it a good practice to blow compressed air through all the ports, just to make sure nothing's lodged in there. No foreign contaminants are gonna like hang out in there for the whole rebuild and then come dislodged as soon as you fire this unit up. Like I said, cleaning this unit, for the most part, 
is super self-explanatory. However, there are a few exceptions. The flow control valve, for example, this one part, it actually contains several parts within it. Use a wrench and a socket to take the valve apart. Now that you've got the flow control valve completely disassembled, get it cleaned up and set it off to the side and prep for part three, where I'll share a trick on reassembling this valve. This is the sub valve. If you look closely inside this port, you'll notice a spring and a valve. In order for this pump to function as it was intended to, this valve needs to move freely. To check for valve movement, blow compressed air into this port while watching the valve. If for some reason this valve does not move freely, clean it and then lubricate it with power steering pump fluid and just keep repeating that until the valve does move. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. Um, while the specimen in this video was out of a 97 Honda Accord, the uh, principles that you've learned in this video can be applied to other power steering pumps from different manufacturers. At any rate, hope you enjoyed the video. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and by all means, drop a comment down below. Would love to hear from you. Take care.